Why, hello there! And on behalf of Central United Methodist Church, let me be the first to say... Welcome back. COVID made us head out. Welcome back to the Central family you were without. Well, we have some new rules to keep you safe, but they're easy to remember because they're everywhere. We'll lead you on a tour. We'll, we'll lead you on a tour. Don't linger at the door. Don't linger at the door. Yeah, we missed you a lot, but we finally opened up. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. There's the kid in the parking lot. Welcome back, where you put on a mask and you don't shake hands. Then you walk through the doors and you sign in. And you wait for someone to walk you in and sit in your seat and sit in your seat up. with six feet in between you with six feet in between you Yeah, we missed you a lot, but we finally opened up. Welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back. singing but it's all we can do our social distancing but dancing ain't illegal no dancing ain't illegal so get your body moving so yeah get your body moving yeah we missed you a lot but we finally opened up welcome back welcome back welcome back welcome back welcome back welcome back, welcome back. yeah we're open again Welcome back, welcome back. So bring all your friends. Welcome back, welcome back. Yeah, we'll see you real soon on the 21st of June. Welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome, Welcome back. back. Oh, it's great to have you here. And it's great to almost see you. <laughs> it, we have been uh, worshiping with just these characters the past uh, 14 weeks. This has been our audience that we have sung to and preached to. So it has definitely been different. So we are glad to have you back. Let's uh, put our hands together and be thankful that we're back in the building. Yeah. We also want to welcome you online who are watching with us. Even though that you are not here, we know that you are with us in spirit and that you will be with us at some point in the future. We especially want to welcome those who are here for the first time. Yeah. Now, one of the things, if you're on the campus here, you know all of you are wearing masks. And uh, there are some benefits to wearing masks. Did you not know that? Number one, you get to smell your own breath. Uh, number two, if you're a lady, it's saving you money on lipstick. And number three, if you do not recognize somebody in worship wearing a mask, just say, I can't see who you are. I don't remember your name. Introduce yourself again. So that will help you. We have a couple announcements today. If you're joining us on Facebook, we ask, as always, that you make a comment to let us know that you're with us. And if you're using our website, you may do that by clicking on the connection card link. Also, go to our uh, website to get the E for all of you, uh, and it will give you an update on what's coming up. Even though we are limited in what we can do, there's still lots of things that we've got planned for you. So please go out on the website and look at it. There's also, uh, for those of you here and online, there's a digital bulletin you can check on and uh, do that. Also, I want to give you a heads up. I had lunch with one of our mission partners this week with Camp Wesley Woods, and I realized that they had, because of COVID, had to cancel their summer and their fall program. 
That's really huge. And so I asked, what could we do to help? And I was told that there's some cleanup and there's some trails that need some uh, cleaning. So uh, myself and Toby Olson have uh, identified two dates on Saturdays in, in July. And if you'd like to help out with that, if you have a chainsaw or you'd like to do any type of work for a few hours to, to bless Camp Wesley, you can uh, email right there, uh, scott at centralmethodist.com. Now, I want to say, uh, I want to invite invite everybody to stand right now. All right. Now I'd like, if you are in the worship center, I'd like you to turn around and look up to the lights. And so uh, this tech team has been making sure that you've been able to worship online and connect. And so let's thank them. us here. Now, uh, because of uh, the way we are, we're going to have to learn to worship in some different ways. One of the things is we can't sing, but we can speak. And so we're going to actually speak some hymns today. And uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Tyler at this time. Uh, will you join me? Again, this is going to be weird with no singing. I'm going to try my best not to utter a single note as we uh, speak how great thou art. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died, to take away my sin. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Ooh, that was tough. That was tough. Thank you. Let's clap a little bit louder for the Lord. Yeah. Now, please be seated.
What's up, guys? How are y'all doing this morning? Oh, gosh. Uh, good. Okay. All right. So it's so good to see you guys uh, again. Evan here with our Central Kids Moment. We've missed you all so much, and uh, we've been looking forward to this morning for a while now. And uh, it's awesome that we get to come back together on a special day, a day in which we celebrate um, our dads, or we celebrate those that have filled the role of father in our lives, right? So today, you guys maybe woke up and maybe you had a picture for your dad ready to go, or uh, you ran into the bedroom and said, good morning, dad, happy Father's Day. Well, you know, there are a lot of things that we attribute to our fathers, right? One of those things is, is, is uh, uh, kind of working around the house, right? Mr. Fix-It. Um, doing all these things around the house, helping us whenever we need things put together, that kind of thing. So, you know, I think a lot about um, celebrating God the Father and all the things that he does in our lives whenever we need help. All the, the struggles that we face, the, the pain that we experience, all these different things that come into our lives and cause us trouble. And just like our earthly father seeks to give us wisdom, seeks to help us, seeks to, to guide us, to help fix the issues that maybe come along, the things that we need done. I remember whenever I was a kid, my dad, uh, I was really active in Boy Scouts, and um, I was super excited about, uh, you know, you do like the Derby, Pinewood Derby, right? Well, we had like boat races too. So we'd make these little boats with the wooden blocks. And my dad uh, had messed it up. And he wanted to, he was painting it and he wanted to make the paint dry quicker. So he got the idea to stick it in the microwave. And so he stuck it in the microwave and it definitely caught on fire. So, uh, but <laughs> just, to speak to how much my dad loved me and wanted to, um, wanted to make things right, um, our Heavenly Father loves us and wants to care for us and wants to be um, the ultimate father figure in our lives. So as we celebrate Father's Day, as we celebrate our dad, let's give it up for our dads this morning, all right? Uh, we're grateful for our fathers, and um, uh, we want to lift up a moment of prayer for you guys. And um, yeah, so gracious Father, we just thank you so much for our dads. We're so grateful for um, the love and the sacrifice and the hard work that they put in um, that we may all have a full life. We're grateful for God and the uh, love of the Father that we experience from him as well. And uh, it's all these things we speak in the name of Jesus. Amen. See you guys. Thank you, Evan. That's a great word about fathers. Uh, we come to our time now of corporate prayer, but if you have an individual prayer request, please go to our website and just click on the prayer request link. We'd love to pray for you. And now let's join together as a body of Christ and pray for each other. 
Loving God, we rejoice and praise you for being able to physically come together today to worship you. Thank you for this wonderful gift. We also thank you for your steadfast love that never wavers and your faithfulness that can be fully relied upon for the world and in the affairs of our lives during this pandemic. And we're so grateful that you're in charge. God, on this Father's Day, we offer our gratitude for our fathers and for all the men who have fathered us and shaped us into the people we have become. Give them strength, God. Give them strength and wisdom, tenderness and patience so, to support them as they parent. But God, we realize that for some people, this is a difficult day, not one to celebrate. Please give them comfort and peace as only you can. And Father, we ask that you just be with them in a very special way. Lord, you love us with an everlasting love and want us to enjoy all the gifts that you give us. However, right now, life can be so discouraging. Forgive us when we wallow in our fear and doubt. Pardon us when we refuse to recognize your presence or accept your power to help us. And pull us to you, God, when we seek to get answers from everyone else but you. Help us to depend more fully on you, God, so that we can live the life that Jesus died to give us. May we be known as people who are compassionate, humble, and willing to help others no matter what the cost. Merciful God, we pray for the many here today and those on our minds who are carrying heavy physical, financial, emotional, and spiritual burdens. Some of the concerns they have are hidden deep in their hearts. Remind them that you are with them and that you have power over all their doubts and all their burdens, that you are with them no matter what. God, we pray for our nation and all those who have faced and continue to face prejudice and injustice of all kinds. Empower the leaders of our country and the world that they might lead with wisdom, courage, and compassion as they deal with COVID-19 and the many crucial issues facing all of us today. And God, as people try to find a new normal and venture once again into their communities, protect them from the coronavirus and keep them healthy and keep us mindful that even though we can't physically wrap our arms around each other, we can find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors and all those around us. And hear us now as we pray the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from our evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, it was, even though it was a little muffled, to hear people praying along with me. It's been a little silent for these three and a half months. And now we come to our time of offering, and we'll be not passing the offering plate as we normally do, but we'll be, we have plates at the door, and you'll just be depositing your offering as you leave today. But let us pray for the offering that we're about to give. Gracious God, there is so much work to be done and so much need and probably more than we can ever imagine. And so that we ask now that you bless the offering that we will give and ask that it be used to heal the wounds of so many people. Father, through what we give and our service, may people know your great love and the saving grace of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebratic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom, and we'll turn this responsibility over to them, and we will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Pacharus, Nicodor, Timon, Parmaris, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples at Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a number of priests became obedient to the faith. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For those of you who are in the worship center, you get to experience what we do. Uh, we've been doing the past quite some time at least. Uh, I want to say uh, welcome for uh, all of us who are here. Uh, it seems like it's been forever. Uh, on uh, February 23rd was the last Sunday that I preached in here before I went to Israel on a, a pilgrimage. And I counted, it's 120 days since we have had worshipers here in this worship center. So we're glad that you're here. And uh, if you're watching online, we want to say that we're uh, we're glad that you're watching, especially if you're watching for the first time. So I'm going to be talking to us here, but I'm also going to be talking to the screen. So uh, be flexible. Let's just put it that way. Um, we've been continuing this sermon series, Reset, where we've been looking at, uh, we're trying to find our new normal in church. And as we find our new normal, uh, we're going to learn to do some different things. And uh, we've been looking at different ways of doing that. But I want to give you a heads up of kind of where we're going the next, uh, somebody says, well, what are we doing next week? Kind of where we're at. Next week, we're going to finish this sermon series up. We're going to have a guest speaker actually come. Her name is Ann Robbins, uh, and you'll see a, a slide of what she's going to be talking about, what we've been talking about. But Ann is the district superintendent of the um, Tennessee Valley District. She's over the 82 churches in basically this area, West Knoxville, as well as Oak Ridge. And one of her passions is really about how do we share Jesus in a world that um, this COVID has really accelerated, maybe folks who are going to be staying home, and how do we reach people who might not come to a church building? And so that's one of her passions, and I really wanted her to be able to share. So she'll be with us next week uh, to bring the message. And then I told you on Mother's Day, uh, this during the month of July, we're going to be doing, as I've been doing the past three years, a sermon series based on music suggestions that you make called Summer Playlist. And so uh, we're going to start that in two weeks, and today I'm going to reveal the, the ones that you've given me. So uh, can you make a little pitter-pat, a little drum beat, right? All right, here's the big reveal. Uh, the songs we're going to do are The uh, Blessings by Laura Story, Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash, then and Change by Justin Bieber, one of my favorites, of course, you know. So um, I think you'll enjoy it, and I hope you'll uh, uh, have an opportunity to hear how God can be speaking through popular music. Today we're going to be spending uh, most of our time in our text today in Acts chapter 6. So have, if you have your Bibles or your digital Bibles, I invite you to, to access those. And as always, you can access the sermon notes on the YouVersion app. And there's a reading plan uh, at the end which ties into the lesson today. So let's pray together. Almighty God, we're grateful for the opportunity to study your word and to be challenged by your word and to grow. So we pray, Lord, that you encourage us and we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to each one of us as we need to hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
If you had to sum up the book of Acts in one sentence, it would be, God is on the move. God is on the move. When you read through the whole book of Acts, you'll see that from, it starts off very small, but this movement of people who are followers of Jesus grows exponentially. Let me walk you through what happens. In Acts chapter 1, before Jesus ascended into heaven, he said to go to the upper room and to wait to the gift that the Father has promised to give. Wait for the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, we see uh, the Holy Spirit come in power, and we see that Peter preaches, and over 3,000 people uh, choose to follow Jesus that day and are baptized. We see miracles happen. We see a man who is lame, uh, who would sit at the beginning of the entrance to the temple, and John prayed for him, and he stood up, and, he, and people gave witness, and people were amazed at the power of the name of Jesus. And over 5,000 people were part of this movement of Jesus. They were told uh, to, to keep their mouth shut, and persecution began. And in the midst of persecution, they didn't shrink back. They, they asked for greater boldness and greater power. And that place was shaken. In Acts chapter 5, we see this generous community that they were willing to sell what they had for one another, and they loved one another. And now when we get to Acts chapter 6, we see the expansion of the kingdom of God going beyond just the Jewish realm. And so I want to have us walk through this passage together. Look at Acts chapter 6, verse 1. It says, In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So what's happening here is it started out the gospel movement just among those who are culturally and spiritually Jewish. But now the gospel continues to spread out and there are people who are culturally Greek. That's what Hellenism is. And so they speak a different language. They have some different customs. And that gospel spreads uh, for those who are a little different culture but still um, were Jews from birth. And as it does that, apparently we find the first church fight ever happening. We see uh, these people who, uh, who were Hebra or Hebraic and Hellenistic Jews, those who were Greek speaking, apparently, you know, um, food was provided for, for um, widows and people who were vulnerable. And the widows who were Hellenistic or who were Greek were not getting the same quantity as those who were Jewish. Uh, and so the Hellenistic Jews are saying, we need to make sure they're covered. And so the disciples, how are they going to handle the first church division? What would they do? I'd say option A, if it was me, I would think may, my natural inclination is if there's a problem, I want to fix it. I want to take care of it. And so what we see, uh, we don't see them doing that, though. I might, if, if it was me, just say, let's make sure they're covered. I'm a servant heart, and I'm going to try to provide and make sure they get the food that they need. Thankfully, they didn't follow my example. Instead, they had option B. And this is what option B says. See at verse 2. So the 12 gathered all the disciples together. Let me just stop there. They're just like good Methodists, right? They had a meeting, right? That's a little joke. We can laugh. We're still allowed to laugh. Uh, but they did have a meeting. And notice what it says here. The apostles and the disciples... There's a difference, right? The apostles were like the, the, the ones who walked with Jesus. The disciples were those who were converts who decided to follow Jesus. And they said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and we will give our attention to prayer and to ministry of the word. Now, when you read that, it, it, it's kind of the first verse three. I, I really, it doesn't sound quite right, does it? Waiting on tables. It sounds like they weren't willing to be a servant, right? But you know that all these disciples died for their faith. They all died and they were all faithful to Christ. And so I don't think it means that they weren't willing to do the things that nobody else wants to do. I think it just means they had a different calling. 
And their idea, instead of doing it themselves, option B was to empower a team. Empower a team. They said, choose seven, uh, seven men. I don't think it needs to be men necessarily. It just, it's just seven people who are in high standing. They have to be full of the Spirit. They have to be uh, uh, full of wisdom. And they're going to be in control. They're going to make sure it's taken care of. And what we can do is focus on prayer and ministry of the Word. Now notice what the response was in verse 5. It says, this proposal please the whole group. Now, as you know, you can never make ha everybody happy all the time, but look at that. They were all thought that's a great idea. Now, look at these names. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also, Philip, uh, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parima, uh, Parminas, Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. Now, notice about their names. Do you know anything specific about their names? Do those names sound very Jewish to you? They don't to me. They sound very Greek, right? In other words, they gave a seat at the table to make sure that those who were in need, who had the need, would be provided for. They set them apart and they prayed for them. And notice what the result was. You see it here in verse 7. So the word of God spread, and the number of disciples in Jerusalem rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. So notice what it says there. Not only did the movement continue to grow, which I would say it's continuing to grow pretty rapidly, but by kind of diffusing tasks, what they did was they saw even people who were priests to the faith become obedient to the faith. The word got out. Now, the irony of this whole thing, I really want you to see this because a lot of people miss this. It happens in the next couple of verses. Notice at verse 8. Now, Stephen, by the way, uh, St you know, you don't hear about any of these other people anymore, uh, any of these other seven except Stephen. Now, it says here about Stephen, he was a man full of God's grace and power. He performed great wonders and signs among the people. Isn't that interesting? It doesn't say that he's waiting on tables. He's doing great power and signs and wonders. And you'll see even in the next verse, he experiences opposition. But then in verse 10, it says, But they could not stand up against the wisdom the Spirit gave him as he spoke. In other words, he was a witness to, to the gospel. And he embodied the gospel, and God used him powerfully. Now, if you read the end of chapter 6 and chapter 7, you'll find about what happens in Stephen's life. He never ends up waiting on tables. He ends up, never ends up, as recorded scripture, serving the poor. What we see here is he gives testimony, even before the people who tried Jesus. And in fact, the whole chapter 7 is really the whole history of the Old Testament. And at the very end, they take him out of the city gates and they literally stone him to death. And there you find the first Christian martyr, Stephen. He was empowered to be a servant, and he was a witness to the gospel, and so are we. We are empowered by Jesus to be a witness to the gospel. In the 1500s, there was a man who set off something that many of us have heard about, the Protestant Reformation. It's a man by the name of Martin Luther. And he had two main discoveries, and for those of us in the Protestant movement, this is something we should know. The first one is justification by faith, that we are not saved by works, but we are saved completely by the grace of Jesus Christ, that he died for us on the cross. And the second one that he discovered through his study of the scriptures is the priesthood of all believers, that all of us are priests. You know what a priest is, right? It's, a, it's kind of an intermediary, intermediary between us and God. And so the vision that the scriptures t taught and that the Protestant movement had is that it's not all the clergy person's job to do ministry. It's everybody's job. It's everybody's job. I remember when I went to seminary and I took a class on Methodist theology and polity. Sounds very exciting, doesn't it? I know you're jealous. Uh, but I took this class, and part of it was we had to read this book of discipline, which is pretty thick. 
And it talks about doctrine and theology and all types of things. And I discovered that there was a job description for the pastor there. And I found out it was four pages long. And these weren't small pages. And I thought I read through the job description. It all looked good, but it felt overwhelming. I thought to myself, I'm never going to be able to sleep. I'm never going to be able to go on vacation if I try to do every one of these tasks. It's overwhelming. But the good news of the gospel, it doesn't depend on clergy. It depends on all of us as ministers of the gospel of Christ. You see, in a biblical church, there's a couple things that we need to know. In a biblical church, church leaders, their job is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. They are to, uh, as we share Christ with other people, the Lord is our motive. You might remember Galatians 2.20, the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. In a biblical church, God provides us with spiritual gifts to do ministry. 1 Peter 4.10 says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. And then lastly, we are all sent out to be bearing fruit. Remember, Jesus said, you didn't choose me, but I chose you to bear fruit and fruit that you will last. Each week as part of the series, I've reminded us of our Methodist heritage. And this was part of us as Methodists. John Wesley, when he first began preaching, he began preaching about salvation by faith that we are saved completely by the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ. And as people caught that message, they started to spread it everywhere. And soon it spread beyond England to America. And he realized in an age before the Internet or any of these types of things, what I have to do is I have to equip people to share the good news of Christ. And he developed lay preachers to share Christ in America and in England. And he made this famous statement, and if you haven't heard it, it's inspiring to me. Look what it says. He says, Give me a hundred preachers who fear nothing but sin and desire nothing but God. And I care not a straw whether they be clergymen or laymen. Such alone will shake the gates of hell and set up the kingdom of heaven on earth. And the good news is that you don't have to be a clergyman or a lay person. I mean, either one. That all of us as the people of God are called to share the good news. We've been empowered to share good news by the Holy Spirit. So let me give you a couple examples of this. Some of you may have heard about this first example of a girl named Cameron Johnson. Have you heard about her who lives in Minneapolis? She's a nine-year-old girl about four or five weeks ago, because of all the protests and all the, the uh, disruption that's going on in Minneapolis, her heart was upset, and she talked to her dad, and she said, Dad, I'd like to make some colored bracelets and sell it and give it to the people who were hurt. And so her dad apparently was a former college football player, and he promoted his daughter. As of, I saw this as of yesterday, she has raised $100,000, and they've used that, they're using that money to help people in the Minneapolis area, particularly churches, to have money to help people who are in need. She all had one simple idea, and this idea has not only raised money, it's had some conversations on race. Let me bring it a little bit closer to home. Some of you might remember this story about three months ago, one of our members named Lorinda Hancock, it was on her heart to help people in need with, with food and kids. And so she, in her neighborhood, uh, set up a food drive and worked with the school and raised about $800 to $1,000 worth of produce and gave them at our church on Saturday and Sunday to feed hungry kids. She had a burden on her heart and she decided to do something about it. Let me give you two from this week. How many of you liked the uh, Welcome Back Central video? Did you like that? All right. I'll tell you a story of how that came together. That video, by the way, has reached, from I saw this morning, about 7,500 people. That's amazing, isn't it? How did that get going. 
about a week and a half ago, we as a staff were talking about, you know, there's a lot of bad news. What, what can we do to kind of make church coming back fun? And uh, we were all brainstorming, and I had this idea. I said, how many of you remember Welcome Back, Cotter? Now, for those of you who are under 40, you're going to have to do a Google search on that, right? Because it does kind of date me a little bit, but I remember Welcome Back, Cotter. And I said, what if we did it around that theme? So literally 24 hours later, Jackie Wiggins, who's our art director here, had rewrote, listened to it, number one, she had never heard of it, had to watch how the song went. She wrote the lyrics for it in 24 hours. She sent it to us and staff, and then Tyler, with his uh, abilities that he has, he laid down a track, he laid down the vocals, and we got together last Wednesday and to record some background vocals and then to film it, and we filmed it in about an hour and a half. And then Jackie did her magic, and it went viral. Isn't it amazing? Evan had the idea, since so many people were watching it, to send it to the news, and some of you may have seen it on a WBIR on Friday. What a perfect example of empowerment. One simple idea, we gotta get the news out that we're gathering. And it happened. People were empowered and they made it happen. And be sure to thank them for their work because I tell you, I've watched that video. It's been in my mind for the past three days. So <laughs> it's been great. One other example I wanted to alert you to. Um, one, uh, as I, I'm aware of, we have a, n a number of people who are watching online, and I want to tell you a story which happened online last week. Um, one of our faithful fans who watches online is my mom, all right? So hi, mom. Good to see you. Um, so my mom watches every week from Fort Pierce, Florida. Some of you have met her when she's come to visit. From time to time, she'll invite her friends to come and watch with her. Uh, and one of her friends is a guy named Joe. Joe is in his 90s. And sometimes he comes over to my mom's house and they watch it together. Last Sunday, Joe was watching from his home. And if you're watching Joe, good to see you. Uh, Joe was watching from his home. My mom was watching from her home. And I found out later that Joe's family, who I don't even know his last name, Joe's last name, but his family spread all over the country, were watching our church service. Isn't that interesting? Just because one person who just happens to be my mom shared some good news. We can do the same. We are called to do the same. More than just share, which is awesome, that's great that we, we share the good news, but to embody the good news in our families, in our schools, our workplaces, and certainly in our community. So what about you? What about you? What will you do? I love this picture. Some of you may have seen it, uh, especially when COVID came out and the, the churches were closed. It just presents such a visual picture, doesn't it, of where the church is? The church isn't just the four walls. The church is wherever you and I go. Every step we take, we are the body of Christ. We are equipped and we are empowered to make a difference. My question to you is, will you do that? Will you take that initiative? When somebody uh, brings something up, will you be intentional for Christ? Or will you shrink back? and not be a testimony to that. It's interesting, I'm reading a book through um, uh, Stephen Curtis Chapman, and he tells a story. He was at the Grammy Awards. He's a Christian musician. He's at the Grammy Awards. And he was uh, asked by a reporter who worked for Howard Stern, what do you think of Howard Stern? And he thought that could happen. And uh, he said, well, he's a very talented guy. And then he had a decision to make. Would he share what he really thought? And he said, I have kids, and I think he could use, do more with his platform. It turns out a few months later, uh, that video was shared on Howard Stern's uh, program, and they were co commenting about it, the commentators. 
And uh, it just so happens that day, there was a woman who prayed for her husband. Her husband wasn't interested in church. He wasn't a believer. And one of the things that annoyed her about her husband, he's, he loved Howard Stern. And so he was, um, he was um, watching Howard Stern, and then uh, this interview with Stephen Kirsch Chapman came on. And it bothered him that his wife loved Stephen Kirsch Chapman, and what they were saying about him didn't encourage him, and he made the decision to not watch it anymore and to reignite his faith and to come back to church. All because Stephen Kirsch Chapman had a really quick decision, do I say something or do I not say something? He wasn't hateful at all. So I just want to encourage us, church, to be the church. You are empowered to be the church, and the world desperately needs it. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, we thank you. We thank you for your love, which is greater than we can imagine. And we thank you, dear God, that you have empowered us to be your people for such a time as this. Sometimes, Lord, we want to shrink back and we want to be shy about our faith. We want to have a privatized religion. But Lord, break us out. Give us that boldness from long ago of the early Christian movement and of the early Methodists. Allow us to be a positive witness of your love, which is for all people. And the people of God said, Amen.
It has been good to be together, and um, we look forward to having you come back next week. I want to give you a heads up. Um, we decided today, uh, as we are just reminded that church, while we're, it's great to gather together, it's also, we want to, we talked about empowerment, so we want to empower you to do something today, to be a m messenger or a minister of the gospel. So we actually have 160 of these plants that are out here, and when, you, uh, when, you, when I dismiss you here in a minute, uh, I want you to pick up at least one. We might have, uh, depending upon our crowd, um, you can, might be able to take two. And uh, we have a little card in here that just simply says, Showing God's Love in a Practical Way, Central United Methodist Church. And so what we would like you to do is, you probably might want to water it, number one. Uh, secondly, um, we want you to eat today. So if you're going to go get gas after this service, give it to somebody there. If you're going to see a go home and you're going to be with a neighbor, give it to a neighbor. The point is, we need to be able to share some good news and so uh, we want to do this as a, a way of empowering you to do that. So there's one, at least for everybody in this space right here. So, uh, let's pray as we end the service today. Lord, thank you for your presence here, for the opportunity to worship. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us to be your hands and feet this day and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For those of you on the live stream,